Hello everybody and welcome to the Four Stacks Beer Show. I am your host, Nathan Hangen. Beside me is this bearded beauty, Mike Fry, mm -hmm. also known as Frey All Day on all the socials. You can find out how to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all the other side channels yes. like Grinder and uh, Tinder. Tinder and um, what have you. Uh, in the show notes, right? Yes. In the show notes. Yeah. Meet local farmers and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All the, all the local... Um, What's what's that new Facebook group? Uh, Michigan fans, mm, Michigan yes, fans, and, yes, and U of N. Yes, there we go. So uh, the gist of the show, if you haven't seen it before, is that we are going to sample some um, local beers, um, usually our own beer, mm -hmm. and we're going to sample something from Mike's cellar. Yes, because Mike is a hoarder of beer. No. Uh, it's always craft beer. Not that we're beer snobs. In fact, that's the opposite of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to take craft beer and make it not snobby. Right. And um, more approachable and we're just going to talk about flavors and flavor profiles and, and sort of help the layman become educated about how to talk beer and then for those of you who are out of the area or um, maybe don't have access or just can't get out to buy the craft beer um, you can sort of live vicariously through our right. our beer drinking adventures exactly. uh, what's going on in your world today Mike anything new I know you're brewing your uh, face off just but brewing faces off pretty much uh, getting ready for uh, for a festival this weekend bringing out a bunch of beer yeah. Uh, for that this weekend, uh, brewed a first batch of uh, Whippa today, which uh, Whippa good, Whippa good. So today's uh, I don't know when, when when you guys will see this one, but it's today's May. The Should 4th. be next Tuesday, yeah. So this is uh, so May the fourth be with you. So is there uh, a sign for that? Is it, is it just like four or you know like four stacks May the fourth? It's pretty 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 dope. Hashtag dope. I have to edit that out. Um, but yeah, so today we decided to uh, brew our white IPA Whippa good. Um, because we, we lean towards the uh, to the light side. We do. We I'm do. more of a gray Jedi. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about, we're talking about May the 4th. We let's could. let's could. talk about the trailer. All right. I haven't done that really at all. So you've seen the trailer. I have. I I've have. seen the trailer. So the, the, the big uh, reveal, I guess, is, is Luke says it's time to end the Jedi. Right. 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 So some people say, oh, Luke's going to be a gray Jedi. Some people say he's going to kill the Jedi. What do you think? Um, I, I think, uh, you know, and I've gone back and forth, um, you know, I think he's, he's going to kind of run like an Obi-Wan Kenobi role. Um, and he's going to die in the first five minutes? I think he's... Spoiler he alert. Could. He very well could. I mean, they, they've kind of, in some of the scenes that they have him... He's, he's a little overweight. They, ...they end everything at, so you, it looks like to me that you only just see... Well, that is the first movie. trailer, but yeah. Uh, well, I mean... They probably don't have it all edited yet. They probably don't, but, um, you know, one, one thing I looked at and, and thought would be kind of cool to end it on is is if, uh, if Luke did go to the dark side. I would and, like and that a lot. I would like you know, that. because all, all the death and everything that's occurred around him, you know, with um, with, with Han Solo's character dying. He just um, kills Rey first 15 minutes right, of the movie. Yeah, she's dead. Then yeah, he's so, I mean, him yeah. and um, what's his name? Uh, the other bad guy. Kylo Ren. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it took us a minute. Kylo Jesus. Ren. I didn't know who the other bad guy was. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, so, so they team up there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be kind of cool. They probably won't go that route because it's probably not the popular route. It doesn't sell toys. Uh, right. So I mean, I, I would think the, you know, to me, I would like to see Luke Skywalker go to the dark side. Um, just to say, for the for all the depth that's been around him and, and things like that, I mean, being secluded. You think he's going to die early and Ray's going to take. I, th I think he will, yeah. That'd be so lame if. I mean, they've already. The first. Episode 7 basically copied episode, was it 4? Mm -hmm. So they, well, why not? Why not make episode eight copy you, episode five? You could, yeah, very, very. Easy. Or I guess it would be six. four. No, I mean, well, Obi, Obi died. Obi died in four. Yeah, so yeah. they got a lot of catching up to do. They, they did really, really quick. So the first ten minutes of that movie is probably going to be pretty action packed. I would like it to be honest. If if Luke, I mean, I don't want him to kill Ray, but it would be cool if he joined the dark side and then him and like um, Kylo Ren teamed up. Mm -hmm. And he became Kylo Ren's apprentice, and then he he broke Kylo away from that other guy, whatever his name is, the the oh, projection uh, guy, yeah, okay, yeah. whatever his name is. Start with an S. Yeah, the, uh, Snoke. Snoke, yeah, 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 Snoke, yeah. Uh, you think I'd watch this before with my kids on the couch many times? Um, but that would be cool. And then they fight that guy, and then there's like it's like the Avengers of Jedi. That would be cool. Yeah. But we're gonna get. What you said, Luke's gonna die. Yeah, he's maybe gonna he's die. a great Jedi. He teach. He's gonna be the one that brings balance to the Force. Right. The thing about Star Wars is, and, and I apologize if you hate Star Wars, you can just skip ahead. Yeah. 
um, the whole the whole lore is somebody's going to bring balance to the force, right? Yeah. But you can't sell movies if well, that's force if balance is brought. Right. Because initially they thought that was going to be Anakin, and then, yeah. then they then that of course turned out to not be true, and then they thought it was going to be Luke and his sister. Um, yeah. And then so far we don't really know. There's no balance. Yeah. There, right now there's still no balance, so we don't know is that you know is, is he going to be it or what's going to happen. Well, so, and then you got to find out how they're going to carry over uh, Princess Leia now since she's passed. How they're going to show her mm, passing? No. Uh, she's okay. going to be a ghost Jedi. I think she could be. I mean, I know, like when in in the end of. Um, I'll crack this while we're talking, and we'll we'll get to the beer name in a minute. Yeah. Uh, the end of Rogue One, if I remember correctly, they had um, they kind of CGI oh, her Jesus. into it. Way to pour, man. Well, this has been sitting. So <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about I that. Don't but uh, but yeah, at the end of uh, Rogue One, they had CGI'd her in at a, at a younger age. So I think you know they they probably be able to kind of crop her in as a as CGI and, and kind of carry on. That's a lot of head. Uh, it is a lot of head. That's a violent. It's a violent pour, to it's be a honest. Violent Finny pour. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a great pour, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. But I was just trying to get something going here. But uh, I didn't expect it to gush like that, so must be all those sugars <laughs> and extracts <laughs> reacting. <laughs> so to, to close the chap, to close the loop on the um, on the Star Wars thing, yeah. um, my point was that if they do restore balance to the Force, then they're out of movies to sell. So then you know, you never know, man. There's some people just want to see the world burn. Right, and so they'll just never restore balance, and they'll just keep selling movies. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, if you ask Kylo Ren, it's pretty balanced right now. Well, initially there were supposed to be twelve. Twelve movies. There were supposed to be twelve chapters all together. Like so, monkeys. Right. So they they were supposed to have twelve chapters, and then they they've now dialed it back down to nine. Uh, they'll they'll be like a hundred, but we'll be dead for a thousand That's years, fine. and they'll still be going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now that Star Wars is, uh, and again, happy May the Fourth. Um, we, we've got a Funky Buddha beer that was picked up on our adventures. Um, Canadian Sean, who you might have met in, in previous episodes, him, he and I went to, um, was it Oakland Park? Yes. Finally got that right. And we visited Funky Buddha, which is a massive, great looking spot there. Yeah. If you ever do get out there, I recommend that you go. It was like Monday or Tuesday after, or evening, maybe six o'clock. It was like, we're talking like, I don't know, five, eight thousand square feet. Yeah. Busy. Um, yeah, but good for them. Uh, there's a really cool arcade bar across the street, but it's not marked. But go visit that as well. But um, we we got Veruca Snozberry, mm-hmm. which I guess is it's got snozberries. It's named after Veruca Salt yeah. from the uh, Willy Wonka film. Speaking of films, and this is a uh, Goza or a goes or a goose, however you want to talk about it. Oh, it's a Goza. And, you can't call you know, it. Like, go- I think you can refer to it as a goose. Lots of people do. There's there's goza, there's goes, and there's goose. I mean, to each their own. Right? Potato, potato. Put, yeah. I was looking for a third one. I yeah. couldn't think of one. So anyway, this is a it's a goza, 4.5 percent. This was canned on on February 28th. Today is May 4th. We just talked about that. I should. <laughs> I don't, know, uh, I don't know what today is. Just the old you know, I just I just keep going. I just get in the car, turn the keys, and go. Um, so it's a it's a bit dated, but it's a Goza, so it's not as big as a deal as like a, a hoppy beer like we talked about well, last yeah, week. Um, so I guess our snozberry is a real thing. First of all, is there such a thing as a snozberry? I don't think there is. I, I'm not sure because the snozberries do taste like snozberry. They do. What we know that. Snozberries taste like you know. Um, I, I'm, you know, to be honest, I'm really quite unsure if they actually do exist. We should Google that. Um, my phone's being used to record this episode, so maybe you can get your, your um, phone out at some point. Oh, that's delicious. So this this was a special release. I, I guess when we picked it up, I actually was texting you at the time. You said they hadn't had it for like a year. Well, it was one of the first, one of the beers that they put out when they first opened, mm. and it was uh, it was a big hit. It haven't made it wow. since then. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, Get right, your, in the, right in the jowls. It's like a mouthful of, of um, mouthful of berries. No, what are they? What, citric acid or like um, what are those uh, candies we we talked about? Oh, the warheads. Warheads, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, get you. It's like sucking on a lime, not without the lime flavor, but right. it gets you right there in the in the jowls. It's like sucking on a lime, but just without the lime. Okay, or a lemon or a snozberry, I guess. <laughs> Snozberries must be really tart. But yeah, it was a beer that they made uh, when they first opened. It was really, really good, and there was a lot of talk about it. And then 
a really good friend of mine, Nick, um, had actually sent me a message saying that he was down there, or that he had family. Somehow he, he knew it was back on tap again, and told me that I need to somehow get my hands on it. And so luckily, and you uh, manipulated me, and I did, and you were there, and I says, well, hey, while you're there, there's this really good beer called Veruca. I said maybe you know if, if you're looking feeling if you're, you're looking to bring something back, feeling froggy, um, I would suggest always that. froggy fresh. Yeah, so I, I would suggest grabbing one of those, bring it back in, since we can you know open up and share it with everybody. And I proceeded to say fuck off Pretty and much. make you you know just blow you off, and then I came back with and one. Then you came surprise. Back. Yeah, exactly. Surprise. Which I knew you were gonna bring it. Yeah, it's it's um. I actually bought two. One was consumed at home, so I, d I did cheap, but that was probably two months ago. It wasn't right after we, we bought it, so I had to try it. Well, February um, was three months ago. Yeah, so it was two months ago. I got back February 28th. You know, I had one in March, oh, so. Yeah. My math is sound. So what do you think? I mean, if you look at the beer, it's pretty clear. Um, really good carbonation in there. Yeah, as we saw. <laughs> you, well, you can see it right now, you know, I don't know how well the camera will pick it up. I mean, there you can see it's bubbling. You can see bubbles moving currently in, in the glass itself. Um, wow, that is just so tart, though. It, it is. There is a good tart there. It's definitely not a session sour. No, it's definitely not uh, not a sequench. Yeah. Um, I will say though, dogfish head last week. Like they're using the um, the extracts like we normally pick it up. It tastes like it. real. It does taste like it. there's a, a real fresh beer aspect to it. Um, but uh, so far, I really really like. There's a there's a okay so. On the nose, I would say you get like a little bit of citrus, like it's almost like a lime zesty. I would, I would use the lime zest. You get it too a little bit on the palate. But just in the nose, so you, you get a little bit of like a citrus, citric acid zesty nose. Um, you get a little bit of that that lactic funk smell that you would you get do. from. I'm guessing this is a kettle sour. Yeah, that's what it tastes like. Uh, and we talked about kettle sours. Um, so you, you get sort of that characteristic, and then you taste it. And first thing I get is just bam right to the right to the chin, yeah. right to the jaw, and then you start to pick up that citrusy, that lemon lime, mm -hmm. and then I feel like you get a little bit of of that wheat, um, some sort of malty breadiness. Biscuity. Well, not maybe biscuit, I don't know. Are we talking biscuits and, and jam? Or are we talking about like limp biscuit? You know, it depends what kind of biscuit you're talking about. You're just gonna skip right over that one, aren't yep. you? Yep, I'm gonna let that hang out. Aren't you, Fred? Yep. Um, I'll let that just... But you, you get a little bit of that crisp, clean, like typical Goza yeah. profile. Yeah. So, as a beer, I think it's, um, I mean, this is a 32 ounce crowler. It's pretty good. I, I like sour beers. I don't drink, I prefer really tart sour beers to like that sequence. Sequence was good, but I, yeah. I like it. If I'm gonna drink a sour, I want a sour. I want it, I want it to it crush me. Hit you in the jaw. Kind of like Guns and Ammo did. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, this achieves that. Now, is it a beer, you know, the flavor's like, to me, it's almost, it's a little bit like a, a margarita. It could be, yeah. You could it's very similar to Guns and Ammo. There. It is, it is. Um, I think we had, I mean, I think there was a little bit more uh, of the limes. It's a little darker. Uh, yeah, I think it was a little bit darker. Um, I really like this, it's good. It's like a Sprite, to be honest. Yeah, I, I would, I don't want to agree with you, but it's it's close. It's, I mean, I, I don't drink a lot of soda. Well, you know, where I come from, we call it soda. Contrary. You call it pop? Huh? You guys don't call it pop up there? Well, I actually, well, everybody calls it pop. It just drives me nuts. So I just had to get that on film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family argument. Uh, but I, I think it tastes like a, a Sprite 7-Up. You know, I, it makes me think about when, when I was sick and my mom used to bring me, like, flat 7-Up because cola syrup soothes your stomach ache. I don't know if that you knew that. It's fucking horrible. It's an, you know, it works. It's, they sell cola syrup at the pharmacy. You fucking know there's weird, man. We do what, it work, what works, yeah. It, it says the guy. So look how you turned out. Well. So if that says anything, do what it works. It says a lot of great things. <laughs> <laughs> says the guy who was doing what works today. Yep. Um, so overall, it's like a Sprite Seven Up with a little bit of like, maybe like cranberry, one percent cranberry in the back. It's like the it's a, a mix between like a cranberry and a blueberry. Mm. Is that what a snozberry is? That's what I'm, I'm thinking that the, the snozberry is. Yeah, that makes sense. We 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 should. Because you have the richness of the blueberry and you have the, the kind of the crisp tartness of the cranberry. Yeah, I can see that. Except it's not 
color, the color you would think you would get more. If you're gonna do a snozz, I guess maybe snozzberries are yellow. I don't know. Purple hue to it. Yeah. Yeah. That would that would make it neat. Like white grape. White grape. There. Now that's mm -hmm. that might be right on right there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of tannin. So overall, I think it's a good beer. Yeah. I think untapped rating for me. God, it's tough. Sour beers, like I, I like sour beers. Because sour beers, you have you have the kettle soured and you have like the, I'm, not even, I'm gonna say Wicked Weed, but I'm not gonna get into that discussion today. <laughs> um, but you have like the Wicked Weed, Jester King. Like, Spontaneous fermentation. Yeah, who's the guy, who are the people in Denver that we visited? Um, Crooked Stave. Crooked Stave, yeah, I like Crooked Stave a lot. So you have that sort of artisan sour and then you have a kettle sour. So obviously the, the sort of barrel aged sour, I like that better, mm -hmm. but I think this is pretty good. So I'm gonna give it, um, I've had better sours, I've had worse sours. I'm gonna give it a 4.0 on tap rating. Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna one up you. Um, I, I really like this. It's actually mm, surprise, really surprise. Good. I'm actually shocked that my friend Nick actually referenced something that was pretty good. Um, I'm actually gonna go four five on this. Ooh. Um, I really like this. I think this is this is uh, very uh, palatable. Okay. It's very quaffable. Using big words. So all you non beer geeks out there, there's words you can start picking up. It's very quaffable. You can. It's it's an easy drinking. Yes. Beer. Um, even for a sour, it's not like a session sour. But this is something you can easily put uh, uh, a tulip two or down. Yeah. So we'll see I, how I, my stomach feels after you know about a half an hour oh, of yeah, chugging yeah. this. Probably gut rot, but that's all. Go right. drink flat soda or something. Exactly. You can buy it both right here. You can. It's horrible. So, so yeah, you got four two five. I got four two five. I'm just gonna cleanse the palate a little bit here. I feel like we need to be Gary Vee and just sort of, we need to get that spit bucket out and just start <laughs> sloshing it around. Well, before Gary Vee, we just start yelling at the camera. How much, how much wine do you think Gary Vee has spit into that bucket? Like, volume of wine over, because uh, he did that show for Wine Library, for those of you who haven't um, heard of Gary Vee. But um, he started doing that show like, was it 10 years ago? Yeah, uh, I think it was 11. It was like 11 years ago. And I think he did one every day? Yeah. So he did a, maybe a thousand, over a thousand he did, episodes. He did a th uh, and every episode he's just like chugging, spit. Yeah. Bottle, like barrels of wine down yes. the tube, man. Yes. It's such a waste. We drink our beer here. So the next beer we're gonna do is a uh, Four Stacks beer. It is. And we thought we had done this before, but we hadn't. Um, and we're excited about that because this is a new version of it. We've been doing a lot of new, you know, when, you, when you're brewing, when you start a brewery, right, you think, well, I'm just gonna brew the best beer right up from the get-go. Mm -hmm. uh, but you realize there's all this other shit that comes up. Right. It's not that you don't wanna brew the best beer you can, it's just that, well, number one, you got a new system, you got new water, you got new people, new ingredients, you got everything. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And then it's like in the middle of your day, you're like, oh, the cooler stopped working, <laughs> or there's a customer problem, or whatever right. it is. Yeah, I mean, you got a thousand. Air conditioner breaks. So, yes. so sometimes things get in the way of you're trying to tweak your, your stuff, your process. But we're, we're now 18 months in, 19 months in, and we're, we, we're starting to take the next step in some different processes. We don't need to get into details here, but I feel like we're making some headway into some new advanced techniques that we're really proud of. And this, this beer, Hopticon, uh, is, is an example of, of what we've been able to achieve with these new techniques. Right. Um, Hopticon is a pale ale. You can go ahead and tell us about it, Mike. But so this is a, uh, drink. a pretty, uh, pretty simple pale ale. Uh, comes in at 5.7%. Um, we try to make this one pretty, uh, pretty palatable. Um, you know, Hopticon is by palatable. You, palatable, you mean citrus style, yes, modern it's, it's, pale it's, ale. Yeah, more, more of what what a lot of people are doing these days. Yeah, it's very citrusy. Um, we're using uh, just a lot of Galaxy and Citra through a couple other hops in there as well. Um, pretty simple grain bill, just some two rows, some flake dough, just to give it some body in there. Um, kind of adds a little bit to the to, um, to the cloudiness um, in there. I mean, we're not making juice bombs or anything like that. Um, but we just wanted to make you know something that was out. You know, so we have you know we have Old Sport, which is our English style, our ESV, if you will, yeah. um, English style pale. Um, then we have Pinfish, which is kind of our I would say probably our West Coast style. 
it's, it's like a nineties. It's, it's like a Sierra Nevada yeah, it's pale ale. Sierra Nevada. It's, yeah. it's piney notes to a lot of Cascade, a lot of sea hops in there. Um, so this one here, we wanted to kind of bring it a little new age, if you will. Um, yeah. Back to roots, back. All right. And um, so this one we did. Uh, like I said, mainly Citroen Galaxy. So there's a big bright nose to it. Um, Definitely it, light. Yeah, it's it's very very light at it, um, and it doesn't sit there. You're not going to get hammered drinking. You know, two five seven of this. Like five, five seven. seven. Yeah. 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 So and then you know some of the things that we've done just to kind of make the beer a little bit better. We've we've really started working on water um, as far as changing up pH levels, things like that. Ma and it's, mineral it's, adjustments. Right. And so what it's done is is it's really brought out the hop characters and a little bit more of the, the malt characters that we were getting before, kind of brings and pushes those out a little bit more forward so the water is not um, kind of covering things up, if you will. Yeah, it, it, lets, it, lets, it lets the ingredients shine on their own. You can taste the malt, taste the hops. Uh, so this beer, yeah, like you said, we, we tried to go modern uh, pale ale. We have like our Sierra Nevada style piney right. pinfish, and we've got the Hopticon. Uh, and Hopticon, the name, is a deviation from our opt octopus. Yes. That, that always gets me. Octopus Prime, which is our double IPA. Have we done Prime on the show? Mm hmm Okay. So Octopus Prime, obviously a play on Optimus Prime. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a double IPA. It has similar ingredients, and we thought, what you know, let's let's just make sort of a nemesis to um, to Prime. Right. And you know, you, Megatron has always been Prime's bitch, mm -hmm. even though sometimes they, you know. Things yeah. get a little dicey. Well, I guess we'll see in the next movie series. I, number thirty-seven, yeah. Exactly. But um, so the, the, the basically the idea is that this is the Decepticon side of things. Right. And he's right. the nemesis of Prime. So that's sort of the idea of the brand. Um, the beer I think is really good. It's it's tough. The challenge about making a citrus IPA or pale ale is getting ingredients and hops. Right. Uh, we typically pay five to fifteen dollars a pound on most mm -hmm. hops. Galaxy is a hop that is thirty dollars a pound. Yeah. Because we're small, we don't have a contract, and no need to get into all that. But it's a beer that is very expensive to make, but we felt like we had to do it because yes. it's our call as brewers. Right. I mean, you know, so Prime is, is one of our biggest sellers that we have here. And mainly, everyone likes it because of that. Mainly because the Galaxy brings that fruity aspect to it. Yeah. And it brings a carry carries a nose to it. So we wanted to make something that was didn't cost as much as Octopus Prime to make. Um, and it was still easy drinking where you don't get just hammered. Because usually Prime, you know, floats around mid nine percent. So you get one or two of those. I'm glad down. you joined the And he starts um gray side. I don't know what you're talking about. But so you get a couple of those in, you start getting a little, you know, the warmth, you know, as Incubus calls it, you get the warmth. You get the warmth. Um, uh, you know, starts yeah. surrounding you. So this one here, you could have a couple of them and you don't get that. Yeah. You know, you, you probably go maybe four to five and you start feeling it. It's, it's like, like Prime Junior, right? Yeah. So I mean it's 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 a prime junior, but uh, like, but so far every time we make it, I mean it's one where I have to I would have to make it quite often to keep it around. Yeah, we move it pretty quickly. So the, the the color is pretty light on the nose. I get, and this is out of the bright tank, actually, not out of the tap. So it's a little, I guess, young, you could say. But yeah. we, we were excited. We wanted to um, break it out. Just could not wait any longer. So on the nose, I tend to get a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of like mango. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of another, maybe papaya. A little tropical citrus. Like a case of papaya. Yeah, is that a reference? I don't it know. Is. To what? One day. No learn. One day. Yeah. Padawan, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, that's that's the nose. It's, it's tropical citrus. It's it's very light. There's not a lot of malt presence. Right, and, and this one too, I mean, compared to like Pinfish, you know, when we, if our last Facebook post, we, we just updated Pinfish as well. We'll probably do that on another show. Yeah. Um, you know, Pinfish, we, we hover around as far as IBUs, the bittering units. Um, Pinfish is now, we, we used to hover around about 45, we increased it to, I think about 48 now. Yeah. Um, this one here is actually at 37. Um, so it has less IBUs. And more late edition stuff. Right, it has more late End of the boil. Um, but with that though, the balance to this one is equal to it's what we do with soft. fish. Yeah. So it's not very harsh. Um, it's not um, because of the sugars of the grain or right and the pinfish has more sugars so you need more bitterness maybe to balance it out less sugars here 
less bitterness required. Yeah, so this one here, I mean, we, we did really, really well with balancing everything out. Um, that with the updated really water that we're using now, um, I think I, I think everyone will really like this. This will be this will go in the kegs tomorrow, um, and probably on tap. This is my current four stacks favorite. Uh, I think it's really good. I think. The nose, I feel like the, the um, you know, still a little bit undercarved because it needs another day in the bright tank. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not gonna knock it for that uh, because it's, I mean, we, we're aware of it. The flavor, very light um, malt backbone with a very soft hop presence. Well, I would say the, the hop flavor matches sort of the nose a bit. Yeah. It's, it's very just, um, tropical. It's it's very uh, clean and crisp. I there's not really any specific flavor I could call out. Is there anything that sticks out to you, flavor-wise? Not, not really. You know, I mean, I think it's. I think the word you're looking for is balance. Balance is a key. It's, it's a it's a very balanced. Beer. So on the on the tongue, you get a little soft. You just get soft hops. It's almost I wouldn't I don't want to say juicy like hazy yeah, beer, no. but you get that same sort of hot, uh, softness that you yeah. would get from a um, from a New England IPA, and then the, on the finish you get that nice crisp clean residual bitterness, yeah. that, and then it fades away. We talked last week about the um, the Surly beer, yes, and uh, the other beer that we had, um, which which beer was that? Had a residual sweetness. Was it a sour? If I can remember that. Yeah, God, it's been a week and we already can't remember. Yeah. Um, but it, there was a residual sweetness that we we complained. Oh, it was a puff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we complained about that, but then the surly were like, well, that's even longer, more right, residual. Right. This, there's nothing really residual, a little bit of bitterness, and then it's gone. Right, exactly. And I like that about it. So I, I think because it's in the bright tank, um, and it's not a finished beer, finished product, and it's our beer, maybe we shouldn't rate it today, but I would say that on the scale of least favorite four stacks beer to most favorite four stacks beer, mm -hmm. it's definitely around the top for me. Really, like top three? Yeah, you know, I'm a pale ale guy, session yeah, IPA yeah. guy. I like I like this sort of, you know, I, I like Prime a lot. I just can't drink it because <laughs> two of those and you're you're done for the day. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Which is what I'm gonna do when I'm done with this show. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Uh, I'm gonna go home probably eat dinner. No, I mean with the beer. Oh, the beer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just gonna go home and eat dinner. Um, I think that I just, for me, the, uh, this is definitely, I'll say it's in my, uh, hashtag. It, it is, definitely. hashtag definitely, um, it is, it's, uh, it's in my top three as well. Okay. Um, wow. right now, it, high marks. It, it is, it is right now. El Indio is hitting that top mark for some reason. I do like El Indio. I, I love, 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 love that beer. Um, I just can't get enough of it. Yeah. It's got that nutty chocolate. It, it, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. So Hopticon. Yes. Good beer. Um, so the next part of the segment, or the show, I guess, is a segment. It's we call it the blindfolded beer battle, and basically we're we're um, battling for palate supremacy. Right. So the way it works is we're gonna get blindfolded. You've got this, or you've got that uh, scarf. I've got a, a um, headband, and Victor's gonna bring in a beer and pour it. We're not gonna know what the beer is. Yeah. We're gonna try to guess who made it what style it is, and the actual beer name. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, well, when we started, I was really good, and I, I nailed a lot of these. Uh, then you got one, a Keystone Light, I think it was? Natural Light. Was natural light. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, I, um, I won a few more, and then you won one, and then lately Liz has been kicking her ass, although, and Liz is, is um, a Force X employee, he goes and grabs the stuff for us. Thank you, Liz. Huh? She? I said a four stacks employee who goes and grabs the oh, okay. Yeah. What, what do you think? I'm an idiot? Uh, so, but Liz cheated last time. Mm -hmm. She got like a supremely outdated beer. She did. She did. And the, the term is called a malt bomb. Malt, it was a malt bomb, yes. It was. And it had, it was an IPA, it was the accumulation by New Belgium. Right. Which had no aroma. It's supposed to have aroma. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we, you know, we paddled her 20 times, 30 times, mm -hmm. and uh, made her pay for her sins. And now she's gotten us a new beer. It is a new beer or it's not a new beer? Uh, I, I believe it is. I, I, don't, I don't know because it's a mystery beer, so I, I, it is I'm, a not mystery. Into, I'm not into cheating. So really? I, uh, okay. So um, 
we're going to come back. It's going to be five seconds for you, but for us, it's going to be about two minutes. And then uh, we're going to try and, and win the blindfolded beer battle. Yeah. Godspeed. Mm. So, Victor, you're pouring, right? Yes, I am. All right. So, right now, Victor is pouring us beer. Did we hit play? Did uh, you? Yeah, I hit play. Victor can double check. Discount double check? Rogers. Tell me out, Victor. I will as soon as I'm done for. Oh, okay, good. Just making sure I'm not missing out. the amount of foam. So, man, it's the foamy special. We know we know it's a bottle because a bottle opener was required. Yes. So we have that one for us. It's not terrapin. So that new. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. It was rogue maybe? I don't remember. Oh, that's when you can't see it. It goes right in your nose. It goes in your nose. That was horrible. Was I'm sorry. I apologize to, to America. I'm getting copper. So we're both forward, Victor? Yes. All right. I feel like I know this flavor. Yeah. If I don't get this. Yeah, it's definitely very metallic. Hashtag definitely. Sweetness. That's a smooth head. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Victor, I've had this before, beer before, haven't I? Huh? You probably had. Look at him being stoic. Oh, you probably have. Yeah. Victor, have I had this beer before? I would just, I would say yeah. So that narrows it down to a lot. This to me was a very clear flavor. <clears throat> what style do you think this is? It's bitter. It's, it's got to be an IPA or like a really strong pale ale. It's not a double. It's not boozy. It's coppery. I would guess. It's it's. I would guess appearance-wise, it looks like mosaico or a pinfish. Mm-hmm. There's there's pine. It's it's actually it's decent. It's clean flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, and feel free to interject if you have other tasting notes, but I'm getting like a coppery malt, crystal malt. I'm getting some pine bitterness. Maybe a touch of zest. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm getting a little bit of that zest too. I'm just I'm painting through the selection at the store to figure out what the hell this is. I'm just curious if she's still what grocery store she's going to. Mm. Because that will narrow down uh, a lot of my selections here. I know I've had this beer. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, want, I really want to ask Victor questions, but I, I, I won't. <laughs> Is this local or regional? That's regional. I know that much. This is all I've been. I think I know, I think I know who made it. Is this, is this a relatively older beer? As in? As in it's not recently released. It's something that's probably been sitting on the shelf for a while. It was packaged in November. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Had to check that. So we, we've now identified that Liz didn't actually go to the grocery. She did bring these from her house. That's what I'm thinking. Whatever's in the back of her uh, of her shitty fridge, this molded pizza and some. Uh, can I? Can I? If is it I, is the ABV listed on the bottle? I believe so. Okay. You let me know. Six. I, I was gonna guess between six point five and seven. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I, I I honestly was. I I, I don't lie. <sighs> I know, I, I have a guess. So, Mike, you let me know when you're ready and I will. I'm stumped. I'm trying to think of what it is and, and what comes in bottles. They could be this old. I mean, I had the only. Talk about what you, what you taste. Talk to the I audience. Mean, well, I mean, you know, what do you smell? What do you I taste? You have to agree with what you said. I mean, I get, I get the, the copper, um, I get a lot of crystal. Um, I get, I do get a lot of piney. I'm not getting as much. I don't think I'm getting as much. Do you get piney the elder? <laughs> Is that a bad pun? This over here. Um, I mean, it's there's a lot of crystal where it's just, it's just kind of sitting there. 
Would you call it a good beer or a bad beer? Um, I would say it's a, to me, I, I like it. So it's balanced. Uh, yeah, it's a beer that I would uh, I would definitely drink. It's um, got to have like 77, 80 IBUs. Does it have IBUs listed? Like, this almost reminds me of like a dogfish beer. Does not. Thinking. I'm just trying to think what comes in bottles and what's regional that we can get over here. Uh, you let me know. Well, I'm it, okay. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm perplexed. Is this a standard offering or a non-standard offering? Meaning, is it a regular core beer or is it a seasonal? Seasonal. Okay, that's what I thought. Man, that throws me completely off. <laughs> Can, um, oh God, I wish I could just, I want to just write it down so I can preserve that record of me getting this beer right. Well, I mean, there's just, there's a camera. I think that's, if I'm pointing. Well, without giving it away to you is the point. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm completely stumped right now. I, I literally have no idea what this is at all. Period. End of story. Yeah. Just, I mean, if, once you said seasonal, I'm like, well, that just rules out any, any of the beers that I had in, had in mind. Does it have a red label? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is Sierra Nevada Celebration. You think so? Yes. Eh. I didn't think it had it would have that much uh, copper flavor to it, though. It's Sierra Nevada. They're all copper. We just talked about how the pinfish is a Sierra Nevada similarity. It's an old school Sierra Nevada. Well, Sierra Nevada is, is old school. They don't come out with anything new except maybe tropical like torpedo, which I... This doesn't, to me, doesn't taste like celebration. I mean, it's probably because it's from November of last year. Um, that could be, you know, key. It reminds me of Christmas. I mean, and I could be wrong. I'm just guessing. I'm pretty sure I, I got it right. It reminds me of that. It's that, that Christmas boozy, uh, festive smell. Like, I just I just feel only, like I know this. I drank so much the last Christmas the of this beer. It would have a red label. The only one, I think it would be like a Red Hook. Red Hook has a red label for yeah. their um, ESB, I think. Is it the ESB? Yeah. But I, I thought that was the green one. Or is the green one the IPA? I think the green one's the IPA. Huh. It almost had a bit of an anchor steam quality to it, but... It could be the Red Hook. I mean, I would if it's Red Hook, I wouldn't be surprised, because I always guess Red Hook. I just didn't want to go there today. I'll, I'll go Red Hook if you want to go Celebration. All right. You ready? Yeah, I guess so. All right, let's do it. Stop. And it's really, it's from November. Were you surprised, Victor? Or that you got it right? Yeah. Yeah, packaged What's November. Up? Like, what the hell? Well, a couple is. months ago, that was on sale at Publix for like $4 a six pack. Was it really? Yeah. Well, no wonder why, because it's fucking November. Exactly. It's still fantastic. You don't think it was that good? You just said it was good on camera. We have it on camera. You said it was it good. Is, yes, it is still good, but it isn't. But it's I, a fresh hot IPA. Right, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I mean, it does say fresh hot IPA. Comes out, they buy cases of it. You know, it's about time I got one right. I know. She brought it back in my wheelhouse, and I, you know, I just. Whoa, that's a beer. serious hand dryer we have here. You, you bought that hand dryer. I did. That is dry. We're probably overpaid for it. Yeah, I mean, that's right now, that's drying the fuck out of so much. <laughs> hands better be fucking dry. He's not gonna have hands. There's just, it's just gonna be <laughs> just fucking sandblasted. Muscle and bone holding that shit together. Well, you heard it here, folks. Um, I, I resume my winning streak. Yeah, because you guessed half of it and got the answer. I, st I still knew it the whole oh, way through, right? right? Well, I mean, there's only a few select beers that have red labels on it. And well, when he asked that question, I figured he knew what it was. Yeah. It, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was Red Hook, though. It, it, mm. 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 But I, like I said, I just knew it. I had a lot of this beer around Christmas. And oh, I do too. Well, apparently not enough. Like <laughs> Palette supremacy achieved. Hashtag winner. Hashtag winning. Hashtag suck it, Mike. Turn this damn camera <laughs> All right. So that's it. Another episode of the Four Stacks Beer Show. Mike is a sore loser. I am a great sore winner. All right. Well, I guess we'll, we'll end this one yep. on a uh, 
Should we end it? I mean, we can. Or we could Unless not. You wanna, like, put it we could have like a creepy, there. awkward silence for like yeah. th three just minutes. We just sit here, camera. room noise. I mean, Sean will edit it out. Sean will love it. Somebody just won a trivia question. <laughs> All right. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. Thank you.